Hello there, welcome back to another show. Uh, today I'm talking about Alex Gibney documentaries. Um, I'm going to go through a bunch of them because I've seen them quite a few of them over the years. I mean, the one I like best is the Enron one he did, that was one of his earlier ones. And he's done some different ones. Obviously, because he's a documentary director, the varying quality could depend on the subject matter. I mean, um, he did one in Lance Armstrong, the guy who you know, the big writer guy, it was a good documentary because I don't know what interest in the subject. It's like, yeah, it's good, but <laughs> to me it doesn't really do much for me. Because I've done other ones I'm really interested in. So I'm sure some of the quality varies also on your interest in the subject matter, but it tends to make some good documentaries on some important areas. So, um, the most recent ones I've watched is Taxi to the Dark Side and uh, Out for Blood in Silicon Valley. Um, now, Taxi to the Dark Side was made in 2007, 2008. This is all about the, um, the American torture um, of like um, Iraqis after the war. Like, what's what happened to people? How were they detained? Why were they detained? Why were they killed? What was the torture techniques? Where did they come from? And it's a, it starts off with the story of one guy who was a taxi driver who was took a fare. Um, the they were all captured by the Americans, even though there was some dubious pro, due process. They were taken to Abu Ghraib and they died. You know, or he died. They were tortured. He was. Um, you know, he was one of the weaker people because he was driving a taxi because he wasn't much of a farmer because he was a bit iller than the rest of his family, so he became a taxi driver. So he wasn't the fittest person to start with, but he was a family man, he had his family, he died, I am with no explanation of why he died. And then as you go further on, you see all the different techniques they made, of takes the Americans did. They started off in Afghanistan and was allowed in Afghanistan and brought over to... Um, Iraq and then off to Guantanamo Bay and it's looking at the process of torture and how torture doesn't actually work because when you're torturing someone to get you stopped they will say whatever they need to say doesn't mean they're going to tell you they, they say the basic way to get information is to actually engage the people and convince them that their original idea was wrong and that's what get get your information more than torture but, to but that takes a long time and torture feels like it's an easy fix. But a lot of stuff you get in torture turns out not to be accurate. So it's just a case of torture. And all it does really is make you look worse in the workplace you're in because you're torturing people from there and they don't like it. They may have a, a they may disagree with you being there. And if you're around and based on an invading army in their country and torturing their men, you're gonna look bad. You're really gonna look bad. And this film just looks into all the mistakes that Americans have made, how the self-justification, how in basically it was going up, up, up and up. The people who got um, nailed for it were the, were the people way lower down, who never questioned what they were doing. They were, doing, were given orders, they did their orders, and then when they looked back, they think, yeah, that was torture. But you never thought of it that way. It was just like, this is a manual, this is what you're meant to do. And you had superiors who said, no, this is right, this is what you're meant to do, just do it. And be inventive if you can. Don't go this far, but do it to here. And it was like, it was looking at, this was a state-sponsored torture. But the people at the top were never, never going to go to jail. So they made sure that the people at the bottom were called, you know, um, basically people were out of control. They were just blamed as being out of control, even though they were following orders for that came apparently from the top. So that this whole documentary investigates that whole system of where does the culpability really come from? Does it come from the Bush administration or does it come from the soldiers? And the film argues it's the Bush administration who really were the real villains here. And which I agree with. I've always agreed with that. that this came from the top. This is the uh, people from uh, the Bush administration should have been tried as war criminals. They behaved terribly and you know the soldiers did horrible stuff too but they were under orders and they were told to do it the administration were the ones who were telling them to do it and um, they, got away with, they got away with it and they get rich off it you know 
So, military contracts, you know, all that stuff. So it was just a mess. It just shows you the corruption of um, industry within the army. You know, how it can be corrupted, how it can be abused, how you can take a victory and turn it into a defeat. You know, just, it's really powerful bit of work. N next one I'm going to is the uh, Out for Blood in Silicon Valley, which is all about the blood tests that Elizabeth Holmes and her company did over time in the last decade and they were um, viewed as this new miracle drug thing that were going to be able to test your blood for all sorts of diseases so you could know your instant answers to what the to what your problems were. There's going to be this new thing that's going to revolutionise the world. It didn't work. Like, and everybody conned into it because they hoped it would work. But the people were trying to make it, were trying to tell the people in charge, this kism doesn't work, this box thing you want to be work, can't physically do the thing because it's too small. And they wouldn't listen and then, at a certain point, um, there's a lot of corruption, people who, one of the people behind it, one of the developers actually committed suicide. Uh, because, because of patents that the one his name it should have been and lots of other legal problems and it was, it's like this is kind of dodgy and then it becomes more and more lies and lies to the different people um, who are financing and you know or, or or as the people behind this technology said were saying like no this is it's on its way it's going to work and everyone else says, you know, this is lies, this is this can never work, it's no way it can work. And anybody who went against it were viewed as criminals and they were, you know, basically hunted down through the law. I mean, lots of people were gullible. They, they got a lot of people on the board who had good names, who were tied to industry, or had names that some people thought were good names. Some people, I would say, are pretty criminal, like Kevin, Kevin Kissinger and stuff. Well, on the board, so like, I would invest a company here in Henry Kissinger's involved in, like, ever. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of names that would get a lot of uh, traction on the board, and no one was actually asking the hard questions, like, how does this exactly work? Because it turns out none of the work, and a lot of the tests that were, were maybe done now were going to send back to a lab in the location, and normal test kits were used instead. So it was basically not working. It was. You're, I mean, you're basically lying to your people, and other and basically have been the Fortune 500 company, uh, magazine Fortune, actually wrote a good piece on it. Like this could be, there are problems, but it's getting there. Even though actually the reality was it wasn't getting there. It was uh, everything's been covered up, and it was horrible, and it was a terrible situation, and blah blah blah. The documentary covers it all. All the lies, all the deceits, all the lawsuits, and as it watched it go on and on, as it looks more and more doomed, you know, and now the people in that were in charge are now facing criminal investigation for like fraud and stuff like that, and it shows you how both how an idea can be such a cool idea that it actually goes again, uh, that no one has to look into details that can necessarily work. Anyone says it doesn't can't work is viewed as an enemy. So people who are into the company become the enemies to them. People who have common sense are viewed as enemies. And this craziness involves until it finally you cannot ignore the fact that this thing doesn't work. So and it fundamentally never could work, but because they just weird sci-fi notion of this wonderful new thing, they didn't have any real root in science. People just get led along by their egos and by their imagination and it's a look at what happens when you don't look at any details. And it's also what happens when you start criminalising people who actually look at any details. Like what can go wrong in a, in a company. So this is a wonderful documentary. Very dark, very twisted, but it's wonderful. I mean, <coughs> give me a start with that kind of idea with Enron. Enron, the Sparks Guys the Room, based on a book. Is a wonderful doc. It's as it my favourite of the as films where it's it looks about an Enron, like how they started, how they built up, 
and where it's time to go wrong, where the line started, where the sub companies that arrived him to build up the share price even though there was no actual company and how they built and built and built how to sand and built all these foreign investments where there was no real competence and where they managed to build up all these contracts so they could actually start making money by overcharging everybody and how it just went out of control and how as I say of how big business can get out of control if you don't have proper regulations for them you know, proper controls of what you can and can't do, how people can be corrupt. And that's what he's talking about to show people can be corrupt and, you know, if they're allowed to do what they want, they try and rely on having a good public face to say, don't look too close into us, we're trustworthy, don't worry about that, you're being paranoid. And how that always leads to ruin, how you, you do genuinely need regulations and companies. They are liars a lot of the time. They will try to manipulate it to look the way they want it to look. So, I mean, given that other stuff like uh, Client 9, about the Elliot Spitzer thing, that was a good documentary because Spitzer's such a uh, guy. I don't really remember that well, but it was, it was a good documentary, it's just the subject matter was so um, brutally awful. <laughs> She's a brutally awful person. <laughs> the, um, it's hard to take. Um, he's in Going Clear, which is about um, Scientology and the different. It's based on a book about Scientology and all the variety of things that have happened from Scientology was a controversial. The thing about that film is the reason why I had a slight problem with that one, because it was about power structure and abuse of power structure and stuff like that, but Gibbity really goes into a lot in his films. Unfortunately, when we watch something about religion, where you can leave. I mean, Scientology doesn't seem to be the easiest place to leave, but you can leave. People have left it. And for me, that one, it was like, well, you had a choice. This was self inflicted a lot of it. I mean, you have a choice. That one kind of was uh, one of the things about weakest. Even though I've seen things with Scientology, I don't think that that great. It's still a choice. and. I always find with that, kind of, that one I always found like, I don't buy it as much as some of these other ones. He's done a Wikileaks one now, uh, We Steal Secrets, which is fine, but Wikileaks has been covered so much that it's hard to get a new angle on it. I mean, um, I think the Laura Poitras one was a better Wikileaks one because it showed you kind of the darkness of the Julian Assange thing, as well as what they were trying to do but also how they can be self-defeating in some ways and very self-destructive and yeah they had idealism but they also had egos and all the rest of it so it wasn't quite as uh, humane because it looked at the, the structure side of it more than the human side because that's where the access was so I mean that's the thing, some of Gibby's documentaries are clearer than other ones some of it's to do with subject matter and some of it's to do with just how much access they have. But his, his best ones really are good. I mean, he did a good one called Zero Days, which is all about intelligence and uh, manipulation of intelligence, you know, and um, how people can access stuff on the inter basically how governments like the US government or Israel can access things and how they have weird programs going on and how dangerous that can be and how a lot of stuff isn't been seen so far in the world that's very important to how we you know will live our lives in the future that was a really good one it's very complicated it's less well known as some of the other ones I mean something about Wikileaks is going to get much more um, traction than something about just a general thing without a big Assange figure on it but that the COD is a thing a better documentary. But there's a lot of stuff out there he's made. It's always worthwhile looking to see what he's doing next. Because he always tends to pick interesting subjects. So even if a subject doesn't strike you as that interesting, I'll probably give it a shot because he made it because he's done enough really good ones to actually really deliver. I mean, the ones I, the ones I talked about earlier, Taxi to the Dark Side, Enron, Silicon, Blood in the Silicon Valley, those are really good ones because it really shows the process of corruption slowly and carefully and zero days is terrific. Just other ones probably 
some bitches do my bias of certain things that I'm not as interested in. I just cannot get that interested in Lance Armstrong. No matter how off he seems to be, it doesn't do much for me, <laughs> you know, because I'm not into that sport, you know, ever. But Gibney's stuff is really good, really enjoyable, and um, I highly recommend. If you like to know about the world, he's definitely worth keeping an eye on for the films he makes, because he always covers interesting subjects. He's always keeping an eye out for something new. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll be back soon with another one. Okay, bye for now.